Okay, so I want to give you a, a brief little insight into what questions would go through our mind as ICAM practitioners if a client comes to see us with, let's say, lower back pain, okay? So if a client comes to see us with lower back pain, yes, we need to look at the local area, what's happening in the local area. But if we were to look at things from an ICAM perspective, if an individual has pain in the lower back, what we need to do is understand, can the midline be adaptable? And can the lower limb be an effective lower limb and dampen stress once the foot hits the ground? So we need to step back and understand and look at the, the lower back within the context of the entire midline, because really when you're moving the lower back, the entire midline is going to move as a dynamic unit. And so we need to look at the lower back within the context of the entire midline. So we need to ask ourselves the question, what allows the midline to be adaptable? And then we'll go through many different strategies to improve that adaptability of the midline. So the lower back doesn't have to express as much tension. But we also have to understand that in upright ground-based activity, as humans, we tend to move on our feet, that the load tolerance, the ability of the lower limb to handle stress as your foot hits the ground is extremely important for the back to maintain its ability to stay relaxed. So if we lose the ability of the lower limb to take advantage of those biarticular muscles, to shift load into the non-contractile components, to handle stress and dissipate stress well, then what do you think might happen? Perhaps when we're walking, the lower back might have to tighten up and express what we call more of a trunk stiffening strategy. But that trunk stiffening strategy may be because the lower limb has lost the ability to maintain its ability to handle stress once it puts it to the ground. So when we're actually approaching lower back rehabilitation, we need to understand what's happening at the midline, the pelvis, rib cage, spine and head but we also need to understand how that fits into the context of the lower limb because the role of the lower limb when it comes to upright movements all comes back to how the lower limb can maintain its ability to, to handle stress acting on it from ground reaction forces whilst allowing the lower back to stay adaptable to stay reflexive if the lower limb loses this ability and we see this very often clinically then typically the lower back is going to express more of a stiffening strategy and that over time can be reflected in the form of pain, in the form of discomfort, in the form of lack of movement, lack of, lack of muscle relaxation. So what we need to understand when we're delivering our movement strategies, when we're delivering our, our rehabilitation strategies, remember in the prior seconds we spoke about those strategies all come back to the delivery of stress. You are stressing the system. But the main thing we want to understand is where. Where do we deliver stress? If the lower back is expressing pain, perhaps it's a case where the lower back is expressing pain because it's taking on or it's handling too much stress. So if I'm walking and my lower limb loses its ability to handle stress, then the lower back might have to express more of a stiffening strategy to handle the stress. So perhaps the lower back is taking too much stress, it's being overloaded. So where, where do you think I'm going to have to deliver more of my stress? First and foremost, I need to assess the lower limb's low tolerance, its ability to handle load, and then feed in certain strategies to regain or restore its ability to handle stress so the lower back can actually relax. This is something that we find very, very commonly in clients, but it all comes back to having a framework as to how you assess an individual and how you actually treat and rehab an individual. And if you can understand these basic properties that govern the movement of the lower limb, the movement of the midline, the movement of the upper limb, then we can be very specific with how we actually progress an individual through treatment and through rehab by using a combination of hands-on strategies, exercise-based strategies, and other movement-based strategies. But it has to come back to understanding how the nervous system offloads energy, offloads workload into the body, understanding what it means to have an effective lower limb that can handle stress, an effective upper limb that can handle stress, an effective midline that can handle stress and maintain the adaptability. Because when it comes down to it, we want our limbs to be able to handle the stress because when it comes to real world movement, it's your limbs that are really interacting with the world around you, specifically the endpoints, the distal segments of your upper limb and your lower limb. And then everything else in between takes on more of a self-regulatory role to handle that stress. And so we need to feed in these neurological strategies that govern our movements. This is one of, 
of many strategies that we teach you in our courses. But if you apply these principles within your assessment, within your treatment, you will, you will facilitate much longer lasting change because you're not just looking at the lower back, you're not just narrowing your focus too soon, but you're looking at how the lower back fits within the context of the entire lower limb and the entire midline because you've stepped back and recognized how the lower back fits into upright, natural human movement in the real world environment. Because fundamentally what we want to do is we want to prepare the individual for real world movement. We don't just want to get an individual better on their back in supine on a treatment table, but we want to understand what does this individual need to be able to move while handling a lot of stress in the real world. And if we can do that, if we can feed those principles into our movement strategies, into our rehab and treatment strategies, then we can facilitate much longer lasting change. So this is just a brief insight into some of the things that you learn on our IKN courses to give you a much simpler, more robust model to apply treatment and to apply rehab and assessment in your musculoskeletal rehab conditions. Because what we're trying to do is we're not trying to address the brain perhaps, but we're trying to look at how the brain influences the body. We're going after musculoskeletal conditions to improve pain free movement while looking at how the nervous system affects the rest of the body. That is the key, respecting the nervous system, but using that and using the principles to have an influence on any kind of pain or movement related issue.